So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I know you're putting the, the articles about obviously Max Roach's centennial. And, uh, I know you're putting on this event in, in, uh, in Newark, but let me just first just ask about yourself. Could you just tell me like a little bit about your upbringing and how you became interested in drumming? Well, my father is, uh, Frederick Douglas Waits <laughs> And uh, he was a he was a musician, a, a drummer as well, percussionist. Yeah. So it was it was a I, I, <laughs> I don't know if I was destined to do this, but it was an option that was always present that I was always attracted to uh, coming up. And um, my father worked with, I mean, so many great musicians. Some of my earliest memories of when he was working with Lee Morgan, right before. Um, he was killed. Um, Max Roach with with Um Boom. Um, you know, I remember him doing all. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald. I remember Ella Fitzgerald. My father worked with Ella Fitzgerald. I remember her giving me a a, a sailor suit and a bank like that was in the shape of a drum. So I, I may have early memories of of being around the music. It was it came like second nature. Right. To, um, and then I went on to um, Morehouse College. And I wasn't studying any music there. Um, after my father passed away, I moved back to New York City. And, and that was in 89. I moved back in, in 90 from Atlanta. And I was around the music. It kind of jumped in, jumped back in. And that was facilitated um, in large part to my uh, association with with the people, you know, with the community that was that that was around uh, our family, so that consisted of, uh, you know, like uh, family, you know, like physical family, you know, family, family through blood. You know, I had a lot of family here in New York City. You know, a lot of people in Detroit um, on my father's side, a lot of people on my mother's side here in New York uh, that I was very close with. You know, people like Dr. Fred King, who was a member of Umbu, he was like a godfather. Max Roach was like a godfather. Michael Carvin was my teacher. And, you know, they were very close to me and, and kept watch over me and my brother while we were um, in that transition period after my father had passed away. Um, and that's when I kind of got back into to, to the music and, and got back into drumming and found myself back around it. And, and Max used to, Max was very instrumental in that because he would, uh, allow me to to like roadie for him or bring me along to do different tasks and so forth but it was really just to keep an eye on me put some money in my pocket make sure I'm see see if my head was right and everything because you know it was it was a we were going through a um, difficult emotional time and so and he was really close with my, with my father and with my family I mean I, I'm he's like a family member to me um Max that being uh, um, like a godfather I went to high school with his twin daughters you know I went to prom with one of his daughters you know so we're like that's like my sisters you right. know that he's, he's like a, he's like a guy like I said a godfather uncle you know who who I didn't realize was as innovative and and the position that he held you know within the pantheon of musicians until I started getting older and, and started really uh, studying the uh, the music. When I was young, I was just, I just loved to play, like everybody does, you know. But I wasn't really a student of the music until I, until I got older. Right, right, cool. So I mean, I know your, your your father's connection with Max was he always around, like in the household? You saw him just as growing up as a child. He was around you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, well, Um Boom was a really special group for all of the members of that band. My, and my father being one of the original members, it was really uh, something that was important in, in a lot of in a lot of uh, fashions, you know, not just because Max was involved, but because they were all involved and because they all had uh, a voice and everybody was a quote unquote drummer or percussionist. So it was about giving voice to to the to, it was like give the drummer some. But and and then displaying the different ways that 
percussionists are supremely musical. So that was the, that was really the the uh, that was that was kind of the underlying narrative of of that band because you had all the melody and harmony and then you, and it was really being carried by by percussion you know so you didn't have any horns or any any string instruments or anything like you have any guitars or anything like that it was all percussion so it was making a statement about that max was always about making a statement with regards to the position of the drums in the band and how they are realized at least in a, uh, uh, in, a uh, in western music you know, it's it's been relegated to a certain type of, uh, you know, ignorance. You know, in terms of you know the type of uh, stereotypes that are that are that are associated with drums. So he was all about breaking down stereotypes. You know, incredible composer, played the piano, and and every member of that band did. So it was really about breaking down those barriers uh, in terms of other people's vision, but also, of, of course, in creating some incredible music as well. So I mean. The fact that, that that band was it was in its uh, inception right, right around the, my birthday, I, I was around during the formative years. That that unit was was growing just as I was growing, <clears throat> so I was around at the rehearsals and I was around, you know. And it was and, it, and I took it for granted completely. I'm you know I'm riding my bike around and doing whatever while they're like you know right. playing this incredible music and go you know. So I, I I completely was was around a lot. You know some of the early gigs I can remember seeing a concert at St. John's the Divine with the World Saxophone Quartet and Um Boom. Incredible concert. I've, I've met a couple of people who saw that concert and they were like, that in concert was, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can remember. I can remember certain, certain aspects, but like I said, there were so many of them that I, I took them, I took it off for granted because it was just part of my, uh, part of my environment. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely. And then did you, have you played with the group, uh, some formation of the group as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had I had like a I had I had a I had a few a few rounds <laughs> with, with the with the masters. Um, the first time I I was able to to actually hit the stage with that unit, it was in Spain, and it was during a um, collaborative effort with Enrique Morente and, and his troupe of, of singers, which included his incredible daughter, who at that time, I think was like maybe 10 or something like that, nine, 10, 11. But she had the voice that I, when you heard it, it brought tears to your eyes. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. And there was flamenco, uh, it was like a whole troupe. <laughs> it was like the whole troupe of people. So he's like an incredible flamenco um, artist. And, uh, so we were, so Max was, I, I was seeing how he was uh, putting this project together and Um Boom was there as well as the, uh, as the quartet um, with um, Tyrone Brown and Odin and Cecil. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they were playing some rhythm. We were rehearsing out there in the hot sun in, in, in the mountains of Sevilla <laughs> in like August, it was hot. And um, they were playing this Bulorias rhythm, rhythm and I and I and I got down the drums and I could play it. So I got a, I got to play in the concert. And then from there, and then they gave me a couple of other things to do, <laughs> you know. And then from there, uh, I wasn't only there to to carry the drums. I also got an opportunity to 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 play uh, a little bit. So there, were, I did I did a few concerts for for a few years. Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can I can say that that was it was it was stressful, but but I learned so much. It was a beautiful experience. Right, right. And how was was he? How was he as a teacher? I mean, was he a formal kind of teacher to you, or just just being around Max was learning and stuff? Yeah, I I, I was always pressing him, you know, because I really got to I got to spend a lot of time with him actually, quite a bit, uh, during you know for a few years. Um, you know, he would keep me around him and just you know, like I said, to make sure I was I was uh have my head together, and then he was also encouraging me to 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 pursue the, the the music and I was always asking him questions in China and he was very generous but also gave me these very uh, kind of uh, uh, esoteric answers to my questions <laughs> it was never like this is what you do for this it was never that it was always um some type of uh story that ended with a theme that was encapsulated in um, retaining one's own identity. 
<laughs> that was his he was always he was always like well if you want to do something like this and then he'd name like an obscure drummer that I don't know that you know was like in his neighborhood growing up in bed or something like that and then he'd do something and I'd be like who is that and he'd be like yeah but that's not what's important what's important is that what you're doing is is representative of you and of your level and of the work that you put in and then you, and that's what you have to to key in on you know, study the masters and study what came before you, of course, you know, and, and you're around me. So I'm I'm seeing the way he's playing. I'm seeing how he's putting these things together. I'm seeing how the drums are set up and how he, you know, he didn't really, he let everybody else touch him. He just sat down and, and played. And the way that he uh, approached uh, the instrument, the way that he approached the, uh, the, uh, the nature of performing. So he was like, you you he he was like you you have like box seats to the the best seats of the house to uh to uh to the master that was basic he didn't tell me that but it was that's what I had so it was like you know I'm not gonna I'm just gonna let you glean from from watching and being around me that's the that's gonna be where you get the most important information because that's gonna be fused through your experiences and that's gonna come out the way it should organically come out as opposed to me telling you, you know, it was more like, it, it was very old school and, and, and that way. And all my teachers, even Michael, who who was like the only teacher I really studied with, my father too, you know, I studied with him too, but they were all very much like, they were hands-on, but very hands-off. They give you a suggestion and they were like, they wanted to see what you were gonna do with that. They were very much about you developing and getting in touch with you, <laughs> who you were. It wasn't about, uh, impersonating or, or anything that wasn't that wasn't lauded by by any of those people you know and by anybody that I worked with after that you know Andrew Hill or Jackie McLean or any of these people they they were all about having something clearing your filter so that clear clearing your vessel so that you can provide um the purest form of of uh, of inspiration and information but yeah. but not necessarily so so that means that's and that's your vessel your vessel isn't max's vessel or it's not anybody else's or my father's vessel or anybody else's it's, it's yours and you have to and it has some little you know it has some different and it's, some, its own personality its own quirks and he was like embrace that because that's what i did you know he's, he's he told me a story about when cecil Payne. He had a gig and he was playing and he said cecil Payne came around the corner and was like oh man i you got it you got it and he was like what are you talking about? He said, I, I didn't see you, but I heard you from around the corner and I knew it was you playing the gig. Like I knew it was you on drums. And he was like, that was what everybody wanted. Everybody wanted that that that, that kind of signature. Because right. that meant that you were being true to to the to the uh to the craft. Yeah. And I mean, who I mean, Max Roach certainly had his own signature. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. So. And he and he and he and he worked feverishly to attain that right you know so it was like there's no shortcuts out here I think a lot of times we have that kind of in in the nature of <clears throat> getting information in the in a, a, a in a setting like in a school setting or where there's a lot of money involved and things like that people people want things like they want something that they can put there that, that they can wrap their hands around and a lot of the understanding that is attained in this music um it's 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 on a like a um it's on a metaphysical level you know it's it's not necessarily something that you can grab or or or, or very mystical too you know right. some of the things some of the things can't be explained <laughs> why they work out really you know it's like yes. or, you, or if you get too obsessed with that then then you use then you lose the the meaning of what you're doing yeah, and, no, the, I and the meaning is is, is what's most important yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and he always, it seemed like Max Roach had a, a conviction and a, you know, I mean, definitely did. And um, he seemed like, you know, he went to, he had these periods, of course, almost like a Picasso where he would put his drumming into different works, different subgenres, I guess, you know, but it was always Max Roach. Right. I mean, it's just yeah, his yeah. Plan was always his, you know? Um, yeah. And there was a certain magic to what he did now in terms of like a, from a drummer standpoint, in terms of like a technical drummer, I mean, what made what made Max Roach so special is just as a drum, as a drummer. I mean, there was there's so many there's there's so many uh, uh, aspects, but 
but I, I hit on one of them earlier. Um, it wasn't really a technical thing, but it was more of a cultural thing in terms of the positioning of the of the instrument and with regards to its um, respect quotient <laughs> by, by 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 others and by other musicians. So so it was always about uh, maintaining that. So you, and you saw that reflected in his in his playing. Um, you know, very melodic or or people use, but he would say uh, in terms of forming shapes and in, firm, in terms of like the way the way that he was able to um, give voice to to the to the drums in a um, in a in a way where it was being appreciated, just like the trumpet or the sax or whatever. It wasn't just supportive. It was it right. was like everybody had a uh, had a voice. You know, true true democracy. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, his independence was incredible. I mean, the, the influences that he was able to um, access, you know, from different cultures, the Caribbean, from the, the India. Um, I mean, he he was always at the forefront of, of that, you know, so you saw that reflected in him working with different time signatures, um, you know, a lot of five and seven and so forth and introducing that. Uh, I remember him talking about how he was like, we went out to the West Coast and we were playing in seven and five. And then a couple of years, and then the next year, uh, Dave Brubeck and the came out and everybody was saying, this is the first time we've heard that. We were like, what are you talking about? We did that last, we, we did that a couple of years ago, you know? So, so I mean, he was he was always at the forefront uh, in, in terms of that, you know, and, and to, I just gave you a few, a few representations of his, uh, in, uh, of, as a few of his innovations. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I always found it remarkable with, with Max Roach um, thinking about the people who came out of the bebop era, you know, the true bebop players the, or um, and then he moved beyond that, of course, or continued, you know, adding that into different music. But he, his direction was so different. Um, I mean, of course, sadly, not a lot of them made it to an older age like a Charlie Parker. Dizzy did his Latin thing and moved into a, kind of a more of a funk thing and stuff. Um, but I always found Max's approach or where not as so much his approach, but his direction uh, really unique compared to the other people who grew up from his generation. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, and I, and I you know, and, and, um, but I feel like, you know, different people had different, different paths. You know what I mean? That's what you have to follow your path. That was, that was his path. And he had um, also some different, goals to achieve through through the music so i think that that also informed some of his choices you know so there was some like activism involved in it you know so so when you and then so that 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 prompted like a different type of like with the freedom now suite um they were talking about freedom you know and the, the, there was a concept of freedom like an underlying theme of that a question of freedom really you know have we attained it mm -hmm. Um, certainly not. How how do we express that through music? Or, or, or the struggle with that, you know. So you see, like you know, in Driver Man, you hear the uh, the clap of the of the of the snare drum throughout the whole piece, right? But it's in the it's in five. So there's a certain level of 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 uh, discomfort involved in it, you know. Always, that's that's intentional. That's that's the that's the that's that's the uh, that's the discomfort of the people. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's there's this and it's it's, it's 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 supposed to reflect a certain amount of struggle, right? Um that so there's ways to to accomplish that through through the music that are not necessarily like uh literal. <clears throat> but you can but you can you can you can achieve that in different ways as as he did with that piece, you know, with the um with also with the fact that there wasn't any like a, a like a, a strong harmon harmonic uh, uh, um, foundation, mm -hmm. you know, it was it was pretty open, yeah, you know, and that was intentional too, you know, that so that's that's the freedom, you know, what I'm saying, so you you, you see that you see them you see the both of the qualities existing together and then struggling against each other, you know, um, all through the music, you know, yeah, uh, it's not like you only get it through the titles, but you get it through what's happening. Uh, uh, musically, with, through, with, through through the through the efforts of the musicians, um, 
what 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 else what what was the other what was the other component of the question <laughs> Uh, well, I'm gonna get wrapped up. I'm gonna I'm I'm get wrapped up a couple of times and be like, "Wait, what was that again?" <laughs> I guess. Um, I guess I wanted to kind of lead you into this to the album. You know, uh, we insist. Um, uh -huh. it's sweet. and just how unique it was for its time. And um, and I guess I, I'm I'm assuming the twenty the concert you're putting on on the twenty sixth is that you are you doing the entire album, or what? What is the? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're it, it will be reimagined though. It won't be in the in the exact way that that was presented. Um, but we will be playing. We will be addressing all the material on the album though. Yeah. Great, great. So talk about like the impact of that album and just how unique it it really was. I mean, you already kind of mentioned it, um, but I think to that point. Um, I can't think of another album, and I, I use the term jazz because I know <laughs> I know Max Roach didn't love that term necessarily, but for oh, a jazz, did. yeah, for a jazz record, um, there were jazz pieces that were political in nature, you know, jazz songs. But um, I really feel like that was the first record that really addressed uh, issues in that way. Well, yeah, it, and it was intentional but again because it was a piece that was commissioned or originally. Him and Oscar Brown Jr. received a commission from the NAACP uh, Youth Organization, okay. and it was in um, to address the uh, 100 year anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, right. which was you know to free the slaves, right? So the so the question is, are we free, right? Are we? Or it was supposed to be now we're free. <laughs> it was uh, like the underlying, and they were like, "Well, are we really?" <laughs> so that, so that's the conversation that's happening on the record, right. and they're showing, and they're showing the instances in, in which reflects the fact that you know is actually you know, if, the, if the question is, "Are we free?" and then they're showing all the instances that that support the argument that that we haven't achieved that quite yet, um, because it globally, especially because he took it global as, as well, so it it didn't just center on the uh on the states it was also including uh africa yeah and <laughs> specifically south africa who was at that time it was under that uh apartheid rule right mm -hmm. so it was commenting on that too it was commenting on the sharpville massacres that where those students had been killed it was it was bringing all that into focus um in a very concrete way mm -hmm. so so the music was a vehicle to try and inspire and support these uh, young people that were doing sit-ins as well. I mean, as you, the, the cover of the album is Olatunji and the other brothers sitting at the table at a lunch counter. And that was in um, response to the sit-ins that were happening at that time that the students were sitting in, you know, from SNCC and CORE and so forth. And, we're getting brutally beaten and, you know, um, hosed and so forth like that, snatched off the counters. And, and this record was done in, to, 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 to galvanize the spirit of those people, of our people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it wasn't really, quote unquote, a, a jazz album really, but I, even though it was in that category, and that's why it initially got to South Africa, because they thought it wasn't quite just, a, this is this is a harmless jazz album, <laughs> you know, and then it got banned, because they were like, wait a minute, this is addressing this horrific system, right, so so it, it, it was banned, mm -hmm. and uh, which gave voice to the fact that it, it was hitting the mark, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, it was hitting the mark, and and in and, and reaching the people. Right. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's funny, not funny, but it's interesting to think that, you know, even like you mentioned the album cover itself. I mean, you know, just from looking at it, that there's a deeper meaning to this, to this music. Um, and for I, the South African government not to quite understand, I guess maybe they weren't aware as much as what was going on in America because they had their own things going on. But the lunch counter um, image is, is really a strong one. And yeah. You know, and um, it, it's it's quite a statement. Just just the image of the cover, and of course the music is brilliant. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 it's, it's that was a time where that, that the energy was was um, the pot was boiling. <laughs> you know, the pot the pot was boiling, <laughs> and people were 
people that have been getting killed, you know, for decades and, and uh, the poverty and the, just the inequity in, in the system was, it was hitting the point where people were like, nah, we, we, we couldn't have built this, this wealth, the wealthiest country in the nation and we can't sit at the table. We got to be able to sit at the table. Right. And uh, he was brave enough to initiate and step out there early when yeah. a lot of people, when a lot of people uh, weren't. Him and Abby and all the musicians that were involved in that. You know, she took a lot of a lot of heat for that as well, maybe even more, <clears throat> professionally speaking. Yeah. Yeah, because she was coming from a different world, almost like a starlet of, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The first time I remember Dr. King, who I spoke to or spoke about earlier, <clears throat> said the first time that he had in um he had met my father and Max mm -hmm. down in Puerto Rico when he was working with Pablo Casals. But they but then but at that point at that time Puerto Rico had like a, a resort community thing happening, kind of almost like Cuba was, you know, like in the in the 50s, you know, casinos and people would go down there and perform for a couple of weeks and things like that. And he was down there with uh, with Abby. Um, because she was like, you know, it was Abby that was the that was the quote unquote star in, in that particular setting. Right. So yeah, yeah. She was like in movies and all that time. Yeah. So she was, you know, on that path. But the way that they were all, but then that was also, you know, I think through their union, they were a, they were really making a statement about uh, black family. Uh, they were also making a statement about the integrity of your art and the message that you want to be sending with you. Like it's not only just entertainment. <laughs> you know that was that was that was that was a very clear message from both from all of them. You know, from my father. I mean, from all the musicians that I've encountered, really, that was that they were very, even though they like to have a good time, even the people who were the most, you know, had the, the, the jolliest and everything, they were very serious about the music and very serious about the intent and the integrity with which they approached the music was, was, uh, it was, it was powerful. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And it seemed to like, uh, in some, in some ways, I guess it, it did have an effect on his career. Um, you know, I think he after that point, if I remember correctly, I know I was just watching the film. You know, he, he struggled to find a major label mm -hmm. to work yeah. with after that. And uh, you know, it's it's interesting because I think uh, myself included, even somebody who's knowledgeable about about the the music and like a jazz history professor. It, you know, when I initially when I think of Max Roach, I think of you know the '40s and I think of developing bebop and and uh, the Clifford Brown stuff, of course. Um, but I think a lot of people sort of like categorize him as such. And like from 1955 on, they're just kind of like, what, what 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 went on with this guy? Or, you know, and the rest is a footnote. But it's such an important part of really uh, who he was and, and the music he produced, I think. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And I guess that depends on who you're talking to. I think mostly the people inside the community that I know are are aware of the fact that he was like, yeah, that he that he was. I I don't even, you know just continuously changing and evolving. Let me put it like that. You know, so right. I mean, I know the things that you were talking about. That then there was um boom, then there was also like uh, the music he did with the with the with the, um, with the string quartet with his with his daughter. Uh, there was uh, there was the things that he was doing uh, with visuals. You know, he was dealing with the Kit Fitzgeralds and then video. Folks right. who did the thing with, you know, uh, there, there were so many, uh, there were a lot of aspects that he, and, and he was always into uh, presenting large works. Mm -hmm. You know, so I remember like when the Freedom Now Suite was re was reimagined by him again, it was like with the voices and dancers. So he was about, he, it was about multidisciplines with him too. Right. Yeah, I mean, he did a lot of that work. Uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really endless to be quite honest. You know the the work that he did with the poets, you know, with Maya Angelou and Sonia Sanchez and, and, and folks. I mean, it's just, you know, the things he did with Abdullah Ibrahim and Cecil Taylor. I mean, the duos and things of that nature. You know, so it's like a, a venture into the quote unquote avant garde, if you want to call it that. I mean, it was it's like endless. Yeah. <laughs> it's endless, you know. It's endless. So many great bands like the one that you were talking about, but then there's the other ones with like um 
I was just listening to earlier a uh, record with him and um, and Stanley Cowell and, and uh, Gary Bartz and, and Charles Tolliver, the members don't get weary out, you know. I mean, this, this and, and Jimmy Murray, I mean, it was like just endless. And then the other quartet he had with, you know, Odin and, and Cecil and, and Tyrone later, later, I mean, just never, never, never relaxing, never co consistently growing. Yeah. Consistently growing, you know, consistently growing. A, a true, true spirit of a, of a creative, true creative. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like consistently growing, but also keeping to certain convictions. Like I know he wasn't wasn't really interested in electronic music and like the jazz fusion idiom. I know he did the stuff with the uh, Fab Five Freddy, you know, his name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Godson. Yeah. He, um, and he was into it because he, he was open to that be, because he he understood the uh, cultural similarities and significance of those young people who were creating using the turntables and the, and the rap and the dancing and stuff like that. It was, he, he could understand how the uh system here in America it was it was like them being able to find a way despite the system <laughs> to be creative and innovative and he wanted to support that you know yeah. and, and he wanted to support that just by his presence and him doing that sent a message that it, it's it's almost like a co-signing you know it's like no 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 keep on doing what you're doing young people I support this you know, and it's with with the right type of consciousness. You know, I think he was always about consciousness. I mean, he imbued that into every every time I was around him. My father was the same way. It was always like very serious and about about being very aware about the reason you were doing so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 interesting too because it was always it seemed like always about consciousness, but always with the drums in mind or percussion in mind. And sure. that was there was uh you know. Uh, that I wouldn't say it, you could see it didn't for him, but it creates a certain type of a limitation in the sense of the way people viewed the the drums. I mean, being a, a bass player, it's right. kind of it's kind of a similar thing, you know. Like right. rhythm right. and instruments are there to support, and that's all they are. Right. There. And uh, to his to his genius, he was able to still, you know, be be this percussionist and be this great, oh God, technician and uh, musician, right. and still uh, have this other aspect, which was you know raising consciousness and keeping true to that music and his message you know yes yeah. well that's great so in terms of the con let's talk about the concert um if we could specifically so um what's your you've mentioned that you're going to be performing uh music from that record tell me about the the people you have on the show and uh, how it all came to be well i was approached to 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 do the the um I guess be the music director for for the for the for the event, and I was ecstatic. And then we went about, you know, trying to ask folks to join us. And um, Cassandra Wilson is going to be the uh, vocalist on the on the uh, on the concert, and we're extremely excited about that. I can't I can't wait for that to take place. Um, Ravi Coltrane is playing tenor saxophone. Uh, Deduzo Makatini is playing piano. Mm -hmm. Eric Rivas is playing bass. Josh Evans is playing trumpet. Jordan Young is playing alto. Luis Bonillo is playing trombone. Uh, percussionist Kweku Sumbri is playing djembe. Um, Melvis Santa is playing uh, Bata. Zafir Tawil is playing uh, Dumbek and Frame Drum. And then we have uh, Saul Williams joining us, the poet, uh, the, the spoken word artist, and Sonia Sanchez. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a full, it's a full roster. <laughs> it is a full roster, yes. And when you approached um, everybody to to perform, um, I would imagine they were probably pretty excited to be part of the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody was everybody. Cassandra has has will be the only person who has done it before. She did it with Max thirty years ago. He he it was he reimagined it, and it was completely different than the recording. Right. 
So that was that was something that was etched into my mind by David Rodriguez. He was like, and Max wouldn't have wanted it the same way. He wouldn't have done it the same way. So, I mean, it was like encouraging and also, uh, but you know, there's certain aspects of, of that, of that recording that are, I, I feel are, are, are core to its, to its, uh, to its being. So that it will, you, you will, it will be represented uh, hopefully well. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Excellent. And then um, if I could just like kind of go back to your own musical. Oh, oh, you know what I was going to say? I was going to say that she she was the only one who who has actually done the work before. Everybody I think everybody's familiar with it because okay. I did it 30 years ago when it was when it was reimagined. And it had a choir, and there was some dance. There was some dance involved. There won't be any dance involved in this one. There'll be video, um, and and also I forgot to um, mention that Allison Schatz would be doing the. Uh, she's a videographer involved in the project as well. So it's a. It, we'll be we'll be telling the narrative in a, in a different way, um, but you know it's it's it's. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. And is um. Is it just that just music from reimagined from that album, or is there other other music as well? There may be hints of some other things, you know, some other maybe some other Mac stuff, you know, in, in there. There may, may be some reconfigurations or, or some expansions of, of some of the tunes or some some things of that nature, but it'll it'll all be related. Mm -hmm. And are you you're playing Kit on on this? Yes. Yeah, I was the last person I forgot to mention. Yes, <laughs> I figured. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes. great, man. That's so cool. Um, and then, like, this is an interesting question. I don't know. I've I've had the opportunity on this uh, on these broadcasts to do. I've interviewed some other uh, musicians whose parents were well known music musicians. Charles mm -hmm. Mingus Jr., Grant Green Jr. I had on, uh -huh. uh, George Coleman Jr. <laughs> right, and right. Uh, um. So, like, is there a certain heaviness to that? How does how does that work with you? Just knowing the legacy of your father. Yeah, you know, I've never felt any any type of negative pressure or attention from that ever. If and I and I feel like maybe if I if I was processing that it differently, it could have been, you know, but. I mean, you know, because, you know, when people are, are telling you, you know, I heard your father play and he was incredible <laughs> you know, right before you're about to hit the set. And you're like, you know, it, it could be fill you with some pressure, but it, it really never did because he I felt that. He deserved is I'm always he he deserved even more accolades than he received or receives. That's that's the way I, and that's the way I feel about everybody, even the people who are. Who received a lot of accolades? Like I, I can say that about Max as well. You know, I feel like yeah. he deserved to be, you know, more widely you known or whatever. Agreed. But I mean, in, in in the great in in the in the in the great uh, in the scheme of things, um, you know, it's, it's all relative. I, and I feel like I just feel like that's a it, it's like a compliment to me, <laughs> even when they're talking about him. I'm always like, yeah, I feel this because I feel the same way. I'm like he was right. incredible, and, and a lot of the things that he did, I I, I can't. Doing and he did put a great. He had a he had a he had a identity. He was one of those people who um who have that rare gift of of being identifiable and having a direct connection to the music in the most organic sense. So I I never felt any type of pressure like that. I always felt like yeah you're right yeah he was incredible <laughs> you know right yeah yeah it was lauded I just I, you know always felt truly blessed to have been put in a position. By him and my and my mother, you know, to um to be a part of the community, you know, and in the way that he, um, or the position or, or how he held himself in the community, is the reason why after he uh, passed away, that we were taken care of by the community. My brother and myself. I mean, we had family too, but the community was very was very watchful and, and caring. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was, and, and a lot of them said, and, and it, uh, most of them that I encountered, and I encountered people now that were like, oh, yeah, I ran into your father, your father was my teacher, 
But yeah, he just took me aside or he was very kind to me when I came to town. A lot of people weren't like that. He was, you know what I'm saying? So it was the way that he acted and the, and the way that he carried himself that enabled those people or 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 and um you know inform those people on how to then react to my brother and myself. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, your buddy's son, oh, yeah, man, your father was really cool to me, man, you need anything, you, is everything cool? You know, it was like always that type of thing. Yeah, so, yeah. That's so, great. Yeah, yeah. It, it was never, it was never anything like pressure oriented. If, if anything, it was, it was the opposite. And it was like all loving and supportive. Awesome. Great. And now in terms of uh, other projects that you're, you're a part of, anything else that you wanted to mention that you're currently working on? Um. This right here is on the plate, heavy until January 26th. <laughs> this one right here is at the top of that. Uh, soon after, the, I'll, I'll have a recording that'll be coming out with um, Steve Nelson on vibraphone and Mark Turner, Turner and uh, Rashawn Carter on, on bass. And that'll be released through Giant Step Arts. Uh, and when that happens, I'll I'll you know put it out there on those Instagram and so forth and let folks know how to how to get it and everything. Um, also doing some some work with um, uh, and Tar Baby. Tar Baby is a group that is co-led by um, Eric Revis, Oren Evans, and myself, and we have a recording coming out as well. Giant Step as well, Trio. And then we have some other stuff that's going to be released in another shape or fashion. We're not exactly sure with that same trio as the core, but uh, some special guests on there as well. So, so you know that that stuff is coming down the pipe as well as, as well as another band that I've been dealing with that I've been kind of working with Abraham Burton, uh, Blood Brothers, with uh, Marvin Sewell on guitar and Lucas Curtis on base so a, a few things a few things happening a few things happening teaching at nec as well okay um, so between those activities and working with you know jason loren the bandwagon um we have some stuff coming up in the in the summer i'll be doing some stuff with jason and the james reese europe project i think we have a concert up in Carnegie hall like in march doing the music of james reese europe which is an incredible project oh wow wow i'd love to talk to you again about that because i think james reese europe i i i teach jazz history and, and such at a college okay. In New okay. um and uh i wrote this book a history of american music and uh james reese europe is one of these guys man who really needs to be m more represented you know exactly exactly he's he's like he's a key like a really key figure yeah and in the in the story in the in the narrative of of american music just in general <laughs> you know just yeah. american music period he mm -hmm. he he is somebody that it's incredible that he's not being you know lauded uh you know like somebody who who was that cat who wrote the uh star spangled banner who was that was that francis scott key yes mm -hmm. well he should be he should be getting lauded but like that <laughs> you know like yeah, of course, even like, more so way well, yeah you know, exactly even more so but i'm saying that type of his name should be, you know, should be associated with American music the way, like, you know, traditional stuff, because he put so much effort. I mean, the, the, the efforts that he put in were like Herculean, Herculean, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, in terms of what he achieved and, and the path that he that he cleared for, for uh, all of us that came after, him. you know, the Duke Ellingtons and the monks and myself and you know, know. Else is, is out here, Jason and, and Randy Weston. And the first person who I heard about James Reese Europe from was Jackie McLean. That makes sense. Yes. He used to teach a history course up at University of Hartford, and he used to lay that information on a lot of people. And that would be the only, oh, he was one of the only people who was talking about that. Right. In, yeah. in school, you know, from the Eileen Southern book. He was sourcing the Eileen Southern book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is yeah, like, it's funny because when I went to work on that project, uh, uh, you know, it's a history of American music from 1750 to 1950. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't even, I, I I know I've seen the name James Reese Europe, but, you know, it didn't connect with me all throughout my Berkeley training and any college, and even when I went to, for my master's, or whatever, never mentioned as a, as a critical figure, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. 
and, and then you, you see, but I obviously, cause his life is short. Um, I think that's a big part of it, but, uh, that's great, man. I, I, I'm glad that you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, that's a, that's an incredible project that, that Jason, um, put together and arranged and everything. And I think that's like the first weekend in March or the second weekend in March. The one before that is another concert, I believe up at Harlem stage with Vijay and that's in, in memorial and memorial to not memorial to but like dedicated to Andrew Hill playing the music of Andrew Hill so that oh, would be nice too yeah yeah absolutely yeah great, great man I'm glad to hear you're part of all these awesome projects and uh you know hopefully someday we meet in person maybe play a little bit definitely, but, uh, definitely. yeah it's been a pleasure anything I missed anything else you want to mention uh I, maybe I should ask you if there's anything I missed because I'm you know I, I can once I start talking I'm like wait a minute now what was that question I started I heard my mouth a lot but I don't know exactly <laughs> what, what the question was I heard my mouth moving on all of a sudden I got caught up in something so I mean you know all that teaching and what I, I get I'm, I'm always coming off track like what was the what was the original what were we talking about here now I feel like I'm getting I am older but <laughs> but it's 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 like showing itself, you know, just in in different ways. So you tell me if there's anything that I that I didn't hit on, please. No, oh, I think you pretty much nailed it. I mean, we 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 got into the concert. We know what's going on there for sure, and uh, your reflections of Max Roach were great. So uh, no, I think we got everything. And if you think of anything that you want me to mention, um, you have my email. I I could send you my email. You can get yeah, it. please, please. Yeah, I I think I have. She sent me your um your number is okay if I just text you my information that way even better yeah okay cool. that's great uh, so if you think mm -hmm. of anything that you want to promote or um anything that you feel like you missed uh yeah be please be sure uh, this will be out for January's uh issue for New Jersey Jazz Magazine I'm I'm hopeful that'll be the cover story typically when we do these centennials like I did the Charles Mingus one um those usually are pretty well received okay and, and then um we'll edit this a little bit and put it up on my uh the, the name of the podcast is 30 hours for 30 years okay and that's uh doing pretty well it's being heard in i don't know some like 35 different countries or something so oh, beautiful beautiful yeah so we'll get the word out there and i hope people attend the concert i i hope i yes. can yeah that is the objective of what they get as many people out as possible no doubt yeah i hope that happens man because it's an important thing that you're doing and uh and max roach was certainly a, a monumental figure no, he 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 certainly was. I, I I hope I was able to stress how important he was to me, not only, but I mean he he really was like um he was just fearless, you know, fearless and and energetic. You know, he had so many ideas and, and did a lot to to bring those ideas to fruition. Yeah, it seems like it. And it also is just just his conviction uh was what really impressed me. And I think that the I don't know, that film really um the drum also waltzes. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it really showed that in a way that I wasn't really fully aware of as much, you know, just the, just the clips of him speaking and, uh, you know, using whatever fame he had uh, to, to do something more than just present music was, is pretty awesome. You know? Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, when I was going through some of his, papers, like the archives down at the library of Congress, Mm -hmm. I came across some, um, and I was researching for We Insist, and I came across some um, children's drawings. And I was like, oh, this is, what are these doing in here, right? So I'm investigating, and, I, and, it, and it turns out that they were, and that's what I should use, they were from kids that were like in a, um, like in a home, it was like a youth home. Mm -hmm. Went and and did the and did. I don't I don't know if they performed the whole suite, but they and the, but they the kids listened to it and they wrote about it and they gave them the and then they and they were and these were kids with like you know physical or or emotional you you know issues, and so they were going into the so they were always like going into the community. He was always dealing with the kids you know, doing things for free. He would, uh, you know, he played a lot of uh, free concerts, you know, up up there in front of the bookstore up in Harlem for uh, for the for the Nation of Islam, even though he was a Muslim. But, you know, for, for Malcolm X to be able to 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 get the crowd to come in, 
and then he would speak you know i mean so there was he was he was selfless in in that way you know and always about educating people yeah i was always curious about that with him with the um I, I thought I read somewhere where he once identified as a Muslim and then he he no longer. I, I don't. Not know. to my knowledge. I don't. Not to my knowledge. He. I, I don't. I don't think he did. I don't. I don't. I don't think he did. But you know, a lot of people did did a lot, went through a lot of different um, stages. But I don't. I don't know about that. Right. I mean, you knew him better than I, <laughs> I never got. I never had the pleasure of, of even right. seeing. Him play. But uh, oh yeah. To- no, no, no. Music, yeah, sure. it was it was it was it was something to see. <laughs> it was something to see, and I was I was there quite a bit. Right, I was well, there quite a bit. Yeah, it's great. it's great that you're helping keep his memory alive, and uh, no, thank you for doing it. That's great. Yeah, and no, it's it's my pleasure. And keeping his memory alive is is making making sure that people are, are in touch with their memory. <laughs> that was that was his message. His message was like, stay in touch with your shit. Don't don't sacrifice your what you are uh, feeling or or your or the way you feel like things are being expressed to you to you know jump into the way that you think somebody is better because of some you know that you're from somebody else. Mm-hmm. It, it was very like I, th- I think we had talked about that earlier though. Um, that was just what he stressed me all the time. It was individual, like stay stay true to yourself, stay true to you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a little that's something that um seems a little bit lost in the teachings of jazz um to from a teacher to student perspective in, in major yeah. uni- in major universities, you know. Yeah, I, I definitely it's like, you know, it's like information, 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 you know. <laughs> it's like, can you do this? Can you do this? You know, it's like it's kind of it, it, it's some of that or a lot of that gets lost in there, you know. I feel like because it's, it feel it, it feels pressured. You know what I'm saying? There's a pressure in, involved in it. You know, and I can understand it because, you know, these kids are like, well, you know, I need to be able to come out here and make a living doing this. And I'm like, I, I you should be thinking about that. That's true. But yeah. you still have to. But the way that you do that, you know, it's still by informing yourself about all that stuff. But you still have to carve out you in there, because if you don't do that, then it's you could still be a great musician. Mm hmm. It it just it it will just be different, and that's you know different people have a different different path toward towards you know different some some so for some people that is that's what they feel comfortable with they should roll with that but then the other people you should encourage them those people have that you know little something different like don't 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 suppress it bring, right you know bring bring that's that's what makes you that's what's gonna make you, that's what's gonna make you identifiable that right there. <laughs> not yeah. you impersonating somebody else and whatnot. That's not there is always somebody who sounds like that and who's who has that who has that approach. Exactly. Like are you gonna out are you gonna really out Charlie Parker, Charlie Parker? Are you gonna really you know, you know, you know. So you, know. You, you do need to have the like the technical facility on your instrument. That's what college for me was really good with um the learning. And I certainly didn't when I when I went there. But now I'm like even just now, uh I'm really starting to come more to the realization like what the musicians who I love to listen to and the great jazz musicians, if you will, if you want to use that term, like what was so what was so special about them? And it was it was that they did something unique, you know, yeah. uh, beyond so when you hear it. Right. Yeah, when you, yeah, hear yeah. The, you hear a couple of notes, you're like, oh, that's Miles Davis. Oh, that's Jackie McLean. Oh, that's Max Roach. Oh, that's Elvin Jones. Like just from a couple of things, you're like, oh, yeah, that's who that is. Yeah. Instantly okay. identified. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and those people, they went through the gauntlet of being um, challenged, their 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 um, approach being challenged. You know, Elvin Jones, he did, he wasn't like immediately, everybody wasn't like, yeah, that took a minute for people to be like, all right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, for, but it was a minute, it took a while. You know, he, sure. he, 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 he dealt with a lot of severe criticism. Yeah, sure. And then Max is a great example in the sense that like, the bebop era that was unique music to it's the swing people right and i mean it definitely limited audiences in a way or changed the way people listened and then he and then once that became the more of the acceptable thing to a jazz audience he was then doing stuff like m boom and and uh you know stuff with abby lincoln and and, and like yeah yeah he wasn't gonna stay he wasn't gonna stay yeah. fixed by that it wasn't because that was their whole all those people he, you know like if trey or if coleman hawkins i said you know those people they kept they kept moving they kept moving 
you know, Andrew Hill, he kept moving. You know, he was, I was, I played with Andrew for quite a few years and all of his day, the, the day before he died, he was trying to leave the house to go to the recording studio, literally, <laughs> you know, he had music up on his fresh, freshly composed music up on his piano that day. So yeah. I mean, those people, you know, people like Sam Rivers and those folks, they, they didn't rest on their laurels. They just kept, they kept moving. They right, kept, right. They kept growing. You know, they kept growing to the end. Really. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's something. I mean, I just finished a book on Ray Brown. Okay. Uh, you know, he was one of these guys who, like, to me, was was very steady in the sense that he was always working, of course. And his playing evolved over the years, but he, you know, pretty much stayed within a certain, mm -hmm. a certain lane. Um, but even a guy like that, you know, um, got got a little into the funk thing, got, you know, was able to fit. He just didn't he didn't like the music that was more free necessarily, but he, there were some recordings where he did do some of that. Um, and, you know, same thing. He was scheduled to play. He died in his hotel room. Like, you know, the night. Right. He was right. to That's right. He was supposed to hit Mr. Mead and the people with him. I mean, and, and he, and, but he was true to his path though. You know, those people who are true, he was true to the shit that he felt and he heard and you, you felt that, you know what I'm saying? Right. You when you when when you're true to your shit, then then you're going to. I feel like that's when you're really going to um, be able to achieve whatever successes you may be able to. You know that you could achieve. I'll I'll say. You know what? I won't say that because I feel like that could happen anyway. But I'll I'll say this: you may be happier. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. you follow that voice that's telling you, you know, it's kind of steering you this way or that way. You know, it's like when you when you try to deny who you are it's 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 like you're doing something unnatural to a certain degree you know and to do that is going to cause you some discomfort it's like it's not you know it's not supposed to happen you know what I'm saying this is supposed to happen you know I yeah. feel like those the intuition and those voices that you get it's not like coming out of nowhere I feel like that's kind of like an indication like you might want to check that out at least check it out don't yeah. discount, especially because it's coming because that's you. Whatever, whatever that source is, that where you're getting that. That's 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 for you, and that's not the other person isn't experiencing that same thing. You are, so you gotta right. kind of like you listen. If you if you listen to that voice, I feel like things can work out better for you. But if you but if you suppress it and then try to follow that thing, I feel like maybe not. Maybe not. It could work out great, but you still you still have that struggle over here though. Even if things are working out great over here, you still are suppressing the the true you to a certain yeah. you know? I know. And then of course the challenge though is also you have to make a living at this thing. So that's, so. The, that, that's true. That's what I'm saying. Like you, you, you exactly that I've I've been there too. I've been there too. I've been there too. You, you make, you're like, okay, this is okay. Well, you know, let me see if you, that's where budgeting comes into play. Like, okay, let me see. <laughs> you gotta be conscious. Okay, let me see what I can do. What can I realistically do here, right here with my, my high principles? <laughs> What's realistic with my high, you know what I mean? So I mean, yeah. yeah, that's that's a serious component too. You know, but then you have to, but then there's gradations. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, okay, what well, can I do? We'll have, you know, and it, it, I think if you're conscious, if you're a conscious living person or whatnot, it, it's going to work out. But if yeah. you're not sensitive to, to to some of those, um, um, you know, messages, it it, it it's like um, then you're flying blind out there, you right? Know? Right. Or, or you're you're flying somebody else's plane all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I think I mean I don't want to keep it too long, but I think you know one of the things just to bring it back to Ray Brown, just because I've spent so much time listening mm -hmm. and studying, um, a guy like that, I really I can admire because he, even. So he was, you know, he did a lot of commercial work, a lot of commercial situations, but it was still, he was still true to his musical convictions, you know? And I think about that, even when I'm playing a wedding or something, like, how do I still be me and inject something a little bit different or yeah. a little bit I mean, personal? And that's the, and, and I'll say this, man, I have the highest level of respect for folks who do work that requires them to play the same thing over and over again, but like, but like inject some feeling into it and have it popping because sure. I don't know if, if I possess the tool that's needed to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's cause it's, it's serious. You know, the memory that's involved in it, the, uh, the love that's involved in it. Cause when it sounds good and it's happening, that's cause you love it. 
<laughs> you know, that, that's when the shit is popping. You know what I'm saying? When it, you know, so and to really find that 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 those places, that's incredible. That's incredible. Right. I have the highest level. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't take anybody's um, profession lightly. You know, or their virtuosity, whatever, how, however you you, you want to describe it. You know, I feel like there are the different levels of virtuosity. You know. You, you know, play, playing some disco shit. There's a certain disco virtuoso, and one of them he was like, shot, 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 who can nail it?" You know what I'm saying? It sounds just, I mean, that's a skill. That is yeah. a hard skill that not everybody can do. It's not. It's very true. And I mean, I know a lot of times. I mean, most of what I do is still jazz gigs, and I get to be great. But when I do, I do a lot, decent amount of weddings and stuff for singers and some theater gigs and things like that. And not everyone fits like um, there's this kind of concept with a lot of the jazz players that they could just fill into those roles, you know, and uh, there's, there's a feel that's not. Yeah. Quite the, yeah. You know? and that, go, that goes either way. That goes yeah. either way. That goes either, whatever, whatever genre you want to talk about. You have to spend some time in it. I don't care. Like I play with an orchestra and that shit felt strange. Because right. it was like, you know, the count was, di- I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Everybody, you know, like it was different. I had to, I had to release my idea of what I, I felt and, and kind of recalibrate. Yeah. You know, and it's the same with anything. It's the same with anything. Right. You play like some, play with some, some Congolero colors, you play with some, it's like, you gotta, you gotta adjust and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. This is different. It's different. You have to sit in it for a minute for, for you to really get the yeah. essence of what that is. You ain't gonna be able to just jump in there and be like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> That's not gonna happen for anybody. Yeah. I don't, it's right. not gonna happen like that. You might be able to, you know, get around, but it ain't gonna be like, it ain't gonna be like, yeah, that feels incredible. You you gotta be in there for a minute to get, because there's nuance in everything. Nuance That's in perfect. everything. That's nuance perfect. exists in a, in a half note. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and there's certain there's different ways to do that, and then you and there's certain ways that people do it in certain situations that give a certain feeling. And if yeah. you if you don't, and and it, and it could be and it's and it's like subtle things, you know. You're a musician, you know. It's like the subtle little thing, you know, the subtle little thing changes the whole perspective. Yeah, it's incredible, right? Yeah, it's just, you know, it's amazing. All right, hey man, nice talking to you. Likewise, man, my pleasure. And I'll, I'll shoot you my info if you think of anything feel free yeah, yeah uh, same thing if if if, if there was something I, if you that you um that i that you didn't ask or if you feel like you want to don't hesitate okay i love it great okay man. take care